All right, so today's lesson is 3.2, exploring relationships between sets. Okay, so if we have a set of things that are not connected at all, what, what are those sets called? Just to review from 3.1. Disjoint sets, right, very good. And sets are overlapping, they are not disjoint. So um, let's go through this question here. 3.2, explore the math, page 159 in your text if you're following along. In an Alberta school, there are 65 grade 12 students. Right? It's the first thing we're told. Of these students, 23 play volleyball, 26 play basketball, and there are 31 students who do not play either sport. The following Venn diagram represents the sets of students. Okay, so here we go. We've got, uh, we've got all the grade 12 students is the universal set, right? The total sample space. We have a circle here, a region for the volleyball players. We have a region for the basketball players as well. Okay, so um, I guess what we want to look at here is we want to start to place numbers inside this Venn diagram, right? So let's see, 23 play volleyball, okay? So we'll put a 23 there. Now, just, just kind of hang on and watch because we're going to have to make some adjustments here, but I want to explain why. 26 play basketball. Well, that seems to be 26 would be in the basketball circle, right? There are 31 that don't play either, so they would go outside of those sets. Does that make sense so far? Okay. Now, we, we have an issue here, though, and I'm wondering if any of you can see what my issue is. Mm -hmm. Just by looking at this Venn diagram, looking at the numbers, what is the issue? Anyone recognize anything? We're over 65. Okay. If you look at those numbers, very good. We're over 65. Okay. Thomas, Sebastian, Johan, William, back. Uh, okay. Um, we're over 65. Yeah, absolutely. So what are we at? 20, 40, 70, 9, 80. We're at 80. Okay. So right away, we know we have to make some adjustments. Does anyone know why this adds up to 80 and not 65? Exactly. Some kids could probably play both sports. Okay. Um, is there anyone in this room that played volleyball and basketball? Hey, there we go. See, liar. Um, yeah, see, we have some that did. Okay. So, okay, so obviously you can play both sports. Okay. So that means, listen, that means that of the 23 and of the 26, some of these were the same people, and we've really, we've counted them twice this way. So let me tell you how to tackle this. If we count 80 here, and we know we have 65 only, the difference there is 15, right? So that means that it looks like there's 15 kids that we've double counted. Now the double counted are the ones that play both. Now look at the circles the way they're arranged. You see where they overlap? This region right here is reserved for the students that play both sports. Okay? Does that make sense? That they're in both circles at once? Okay? So they're not disjoint. They're actually overlapping a bit. So now if I've done this, does that solve my problem? 15 there. Am I good now? Is that up to 65? Well, look at what we've actually done. This is what we should have done. We should have taken 15 of these 23 and moved them over to this part of the circle. Right? That's, that's really what we should have done. So by me putting the 15 here and not touching this 23, I've actually really messed things up. So what we need to do is we need to subtract 15 from this 23 because we've moved them over here. And now we just have eight students left over here. You see that? And likewise, for the basketball players, it's 15 of these basketball players play also play volleyball. So I have 11 that should be here. Okay. All right. So any that, okay, so a couple things. Any that we've double counted, the, the, the ones that play both would go in this region. We've double counted them, so we have to take them away from our original numbers. And so this tells us, now this 8 tells us, okay, 8 are the number of players in this region, which is volleyball, play volleyball, but not basketball. And over here, there's 11 in this region that signify they play basketball, but not volleyball. And then there's 15 that play both. Okay. So I'll get rid of those there just for a second. So now what we can do is we can add up 8 plus 15 plus 11 plus 31. Okay, so that's 23. Uh, that's 34. And 
31, 34 and 31. Have I got that right here now? 65, 34 and 41. What? 34 and 31. Thank you. Got blanked for a second. So yeah, so we, this is these numbers add up now, right? 8 plus 15 plus 11 plus 31 is 65. Okay? So now, from this, from this um, Venn diagram here, we can get information that we weren't told about. Because we weren't told how many students play both, right? That's a question that now can be answered. Because we've separated you know, the data and we've uh, you know, done some work on this. Okay? So now we can answer this, who plays volleyball only or how many? Eight. How many play basketball only? Eleven. How many play both? Fifteen. Those are questions that we couldn't answer before. Okay, does everyone understand that first section there, first part? Okay, so Venn diagrams can help us organize uh, data. Okay, so we're not quite done yet, but what I want to do is just go over a few important things that are in the summary of the key ideas of the chapter. Okay, so sets that are not disjoint, okay, are, sh are sets that share common elements. Okay, and so that means we have this region that overlaps and there will be some elements in there if they're not disjoint. Each area of a Venn diagram represents something different. Mm -hmm. So just by way of review here, this area right here, this kind of reddish area right here, are elements that are in A but not B. Likewise, this area here, elements that are in whatever set B is but not in A. And this area right here are elements that are in set A and set B. So this is A and B right here. And of course outside of the circles in this kind of you know jelly area out here with nothing, that's elements that are not in A or B but still in U. Okay? Mm -hmm. and in our previous example that would be the 31 students that don't play volleyball or basketball. Maybe they play other sports, maybe they don't play any sports. But they are not in these two categories. Okay, is this making sense so far? Good? All right, um, some important things. Each element in the universal set appears only once in the Venn diagram. So as we had before when we ran into problems, right, we had the 15 kids here and we had 23 here. Well, there's, we know that there are students that are in both of those counts. So they can only appear once. Okay, so each element only appears once in a Venn diagram. If an element occurs more uh, in more than one set, it's placed in the area of the Venn diagram where the sets overlap. Okay, so that's the that's the basic stuff here. We're going to get into more notation, I think, next next section. But this is sort of what we need to understand for 3.2. So now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to go over, you know, some of the questions <coughs> in your assignment. Let's just kind of let's just do one here. So number one is going to be in your assignment. So you can flip to your assignment page, whatever you want to do, and let's go over this together. Okay. So number one. This will be on page 160. Okay, so it says consider the following sets. All right. U is a, a set of the numbers 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10, 12, 14, and 15. A is 3, 6, 9, 12, and 15, and B, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and 14. So it says, illustrate these sets using a Venn diagram. Okay. Well, we can certainly do that. Let's do that below. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw a big rectangle. Oh, that's a little crooked here. I'm going to draw a big rectangle here that's going to represent the universal set. So all of these numbers have to go in the set. I, I probably wouldn't start by placing these numbers in the set unless you're okay with erasing things and moving things around quite a bit. Let me give you a hint, okay? Let me give you a hint. What you want to do is you want to look to see if the, um, the sets A and B, if they are disjoint or not. So don't write this down, but are we going to have circles like this or are we going to have circles that overlap some, right? That's what you want to look at first. So how do we do that? Well, look quickly at the numbers in each. And are there any that are common in both sets? 
And it looks to me that 6 shows up in both sets. And anything else? Oh, 12. Okay, so this means that A and B are not disjoint. So let's go ahead and let's make two, those aren't really circles, but I'm going to make two regions. Okay, and where do 6 and 12 go now in my Venn diagram? Where do they go? Okay, so do they go here, 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 or here? Which number? Where do they go? So this is, this is going to be A right here. This is going to be B. So 6 and 12, do you see they're in both A and B? They're the ones that are in both. So which region? Sorry? Third. Exactly. Very good. Okay. So let's get rid of those. Okay. So A and B. And let's put 6 and 12 here. Okay. So that's where those, that's where those two numbers go. All right, so which numbers are in A, let's focus on this region over here, are in A but not B? Well, 3, 9, and 15. So we're going to put 3, 9, and 15 over here. Which numbers go in this region, B but not A? And from there you should see, hey, 2, 4, 8, 10, and 14. Those are in B, but they're not in A. So, I'll use blue again. So that's 2, 4, um, 8, 6 is already in over here, right? 10, and 14. Okay. Now, are there any numbers that are not in A or B? but are still in the universal set. So are there any numbers that we haven't written down already that are in this top row here? Are we missing any? I don't think so, hey? Well, let's do a quick count of what we got. We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 numbers. In the universal set, we should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so quick count says we probably got them all accounted for. So there's nothing that goes in this outside region. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, so let's just double check to make sure that we've got everything placed properly. So in A, we should have 3, 6, 9, 12, and 15. So 3, 6, 9, 12, and 15. Those numbers are all in, uh, inside A. Awesome. Inside B, we should have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and 14. Good to go. Okay. Is everyone with me so far? You guys are good? Okay? All right. Now that we've got the Venn diagram set up, we can answer the rest of these questions pretty easily. So let's go through this, and I think, I think if you understand this question, you're pretty much set for this, uh, this, uh, sorry, you understand this question. You're set for the section. So determine the number of elements in A. So that would be the number of elements in A. Remember how we uh, expressed that yesterday? The number of elements in A. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it says on our diagram here. Also, you can count on the list. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the number of elements in A is 5. Okay, the number of elements in set A but not B. Okay. <coughs> um, uh, I think, just give me, give me a second here. I think this notation is going to come next section, so I don't want to, I don't want to throw you off here. Yeah, let's just, let's just say um, the number of A but not B. Okay, let's just write like that. Okay, so that would be this one, this one, and this one, because these ones in A are also in B. So in set A but not in set B, that's going to be three of them, I think, right there, right? 3, 9, and 15. Okay? All right, in set B should be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So the number in B should be 7. In set B but not in set A should be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the number in B but not A. You guys, is this making sense? Okay, so 
The next two here are really important that we haven't really talked too much about. The number of elements in set A and in set B. Okay, so when you see an and here, it's really important. That means both, okay? And means both. So in set A and B at the same time. So n of A and B, that's going to be 6 and 12, guys, okay? So the number of set in set A and B is 2. So the number is 6 and 12. That's different than this one that says the numbers of set in set A or set B. So the numbers in A or B, that's going to be all of the numbers that are in A or B. So we're really, we're looking at this. Everything that's in this one or this one. So you count them all once, everything that's inside both of those circles. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, that's the or. And finally, everything that is not in set A, that's the complement of A. So everything that's outside of the A circle. And so that's going to be this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Nope, not those first two, right? So anything that's not in A is going to start out here. One, two, three, four, five, okay? So the number in the complement of A is five. Okay, any questions about that? So there's the assignment so far, 3, 1, and 3, 2. Okay, so here's the questions from the textbook. That's number one that I just went through. And there's number two. There's number three. Number four. And number five.